Good evening. Hello, hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well. And it's been a good day for you. Hi, Damona. Hi, dear. So, uh, straight to the business because I have a wonderful guest today. Absolutely unique personality. And I have so many questions to her that, oh my God, I'm afraid we will not fit 60 minutes, but we'll see how it goes. So, I already see you tomorrow, my dear. Okay, waiting for Tamar. I hope you can see me, guys. <sighs> Hi, Eva. Hello. Hello, Tamar. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay, Tamar is connecting. Uh, meanwhile. Okay, Tamar, the picture is... Oh, okay, so there is a little bit of uh, of delay of your picture, but I hope it will be okay. Can you hear Sorry. me well? Hi, you are. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you? How are you, Tamar? Dear? Can you hear me? Okay, guys, let me, let me try to call. Tamar, can you hear me, dear? Now I can hear you well because I once again got connected with my phone. It's more comfortable and safer than like a wireless internet nowadays. So. Okay, okay. So, Tamar, let me please introduce you to our audience. This is Miss Tamar Dolidze from Georgia. And as I told you already, guys, this absolutely unique, great talent. Oh. Uh, yes, because, come mm. on, I will not be able to fit in two minutes to introduce you, Tamar, <laughs> dear. So this is the lecturer in the Georgian universities, three of them, Batumi University, the Belize University, Batumi state marine academy this is a guest lecturer in many countries such as poland italy germany russia and kazakhstan online university so tamar has been delivering lectures in all of these countries and she is recognized by many students in the world she is also an invited speaker she was a presenter in the itafl sag and the itafl business english conference in 2020 she is a trainer at the EFL methodology and she has been elected as an associate professor at online university based in Malta and oh my god <laughs> so yeah. far, it's just oh my god I will have many questions to you one of them will be how do you manage to be such a fantastic woman so gorgeous a wife a mother and such a great talent in the uh, English speaking community oh my god <laughs> but but also, I have to say that uh, Tamar has uh, won Erasmus Teaching Mobility Scholarship in Poland, and in spring she will be coming here. Oh, yeah. No, I so we hope. hope. I hope. We'll see each other. I hope. I hope. <laughs> I so hope that we will see each other. I hope that everything settles down and you will be Absolutely. able to come. I, my fingers crossed, definitely, apart from the uh, Poland uh, scholarship. Uh, Tamar also participated already in the Portugal and uh, Portugal one and uh, German one. So, Tamar, let's start from this question. Can you please tell us what is it? What is this Erasmus? How you found out? Um, well, we all know that the basics, of course, but uh, meaning such, such details which we don't know. How you found out? How you participated? How you were elected? How you were invited? How do you feel about yeah. it? Yeah, Olga, thank you, first of all, for inviting me. And uh, at the same time, I'm really honored at the same time to share my experience, maybe more this experience of how I actually developed as a teacher, as a novice researcher, I can tell myself. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, so a guest lecturer, 
and of course, um, so this is very important uh, in, uh, in our lives. But at the same time, uh, I would like to start uh, uh, with the teacher development uh, that nowadays uh, without exposure to the so best practices without exposure to foreign out to say uh, so uh, experiences it's very difficult to, to develop yourself in your own country and uh, thanks to this I have to say uh, early Erasmus uh, mobility projects uh, early in like uh, 2014 uh, I was very lucky yes uh, to take part in this uh, contest uh, from my home institutions and got a very nice like teaching mobility uh, from a Porto University which is really nice city but of course again uh, applying for Erasmus really uh, needs uh, di different skills such as uh, you need to prove yourself as a valuable candidate because the competition even uh, just uh, it's quite big even uh, from your own countries there may be different candidates uh, but you need to offer something peculiar something uh, uh, where you have to say uh, applicable to their like uh, uh, current needs. That's why I offered ESP courses that those times I was mostly uh, just uh, mostly teaching business English, not legal English, I can tell you. Uh, but I was really lucky to be hosted by a really great professor, Nicholas Horst. Uh, and uh, so he really guided me, guided me in a just great way. And of course, introduced with, uh, I have to say, most recent course books, materials in the ESP field. I was very lucky to be attending his lectures. Uh, also, at the same time, we I was involved in evaluation of master students, uh, future if you, English philology students. Uh, I was in the commission, commission at the same time. I was interacting uh, with the students, with the professor, mostly uh, so my host professor, but as well with the like, members of the staff. And I really fell in love with Portuguese people. This was my First, Erasmus Mobility, uh, apart from other training experiences uh, or, and also visiting other like a country like a Britain. But of course, Erasmus Mobility is very important for teachers and professors and, and always researchers in order to get to know with the situation ongoing uh, in more developed country than your country. Uh, that's why I really benefited from my very first uh, Erasmus Mobility. And if I continue, like if you just may, may I continue about other mobilities, it was then followed by Germany. So a German, a German really just German institutions, they have really just biggest traditions in research, not only in the field of like, a, uh, especially in education field. And I was, uh, I applied for Jena Friedrichsruhe University, which is really great city. The city where you can uh, definitely focus on research, on working in a library. It's, it was a summer period, it, it lasts for 15 days. And I, I was very lucky to be hosted by just an English British lady, but uh, she was living in Germany. Uh, but I was living with, with her and it was another great experience of uh, colleague, cohabit cohabitating um, and at the same time we were even discussing uh, a lot of educational I issues during breakfast time, yes, during, uh, uh, but lunch time was at university cafe, it's at Italian, yes, and uh, so and at the same time we also interacted with your PhD students, apart from other uh, like a university staff, we even spent evenings together with some outdoor activities like jogging, etc. Maybe just shopping uh, and going to cafes, but it was really nice experience. Apart uh, from the fact that we uh, then I was teaching legal English, and I was really very lucky to be shared with great experience of how to effectively teach ESP with authentic materials, not to be dependent on course books, uh, which is very important. So I really uh, did my best in order to, uh, so uh, obtained that great experience from Germany, from Vienna. Then, of course, then I also, uh, Erasmus is a great thing, of course, uh, but apart from Erasmus, uh, I really just uh, was very lucky uh, to be invited as a guest lecturer and 
uh, maybe you will be asking me what is the best way. So I have never tried to apply, you know, even the term case lecturing was quite uh, unfamiliar for me when during one academic conferences and uh, like a, in, it was in 2017, uh, I'm also a member of uh, like a, a European multidisciplinary forum, which organizes and you, which used to be organizing face-to-face -face events in Georgia. And uh, it's a, it's a, like a, a re, it's, we have like a, our research main partner, which is European Scientific Institute. Uh, and I'm also a member of the editorial team of Journal of Linguistics uh, and uh, so literature. Uh, and during such events when I was presenting, one of conference participants approached me. So again, asked me questions and we socialized a lot during breaks. So in those three times uh, during our normal circumstances. That's, uh, and as a matter of fact, she uh, just uh, offered me opportunity to be co-teaching um, uh, master students of law uh, in Russian university and so there were a lot of formalities, some kind of visa procedures, but I agree, why not? It was my first experience, yes? And uh, I really succeeded. Not succeeded, but it, I really just, uh, just uh, I really so made use of this uh, um, experience of meeting a lot of professors uh, from Poland, by the way, uh, from uh, so Italy, Reggio Calabria, Southern people, and uh, we became a big family, and then we started to be inviting each other. So it, it came uh, uh, not intentionally. So it, it was somehow like a based on a, like a specific circumstance. Yes, and go, guest lecturing at the same time Erasmus. But I still just apply for Erasmus if there is an interesting call for me. <laughs> yes. Of course. Yeah. So uh, networking plays a huge role. Network actually. huge. And during breaks, <laughs> during uh, so uh, maybe social events, uh, um, it's a great opportunity to get in touch with people because personal relationships uh, really matter what we actually lack nowadays uh, and what we so really would like to be uh, returning as soon as possible. But, but I you can see the technical advantage on, of the internet, right? So we still yeah. keep in touch. We are still keep in touch, uh, but <laughs> even uh, but you, you know during even COVID nineteen, so if you if you proactively manage uh, uh, our the social media platforms. Um, we can definitely just uh, increase uh, uh, just our professional fellow uh, just uh, contacts, uh, which I am really happy for. That's why I really increased uh, my professional network. And even sometimes I really spend a lot of time. Yes. Uh, and even my family members just somehow reproach me. You are not with us. We are all the time. Yes. Just socializing. But we, I am socializing because we lack this. Uh, we have this gap of not uh, just uh, meeting these people face to face. Uh, uh, because when you travel for work on Erasmus or like a guest lecturing for three weeks for a longer period, you are somehow isolated. You are mostly committed to this teaching activity at the same time socializing. But now we are split in like, in, and we have to multitask. That's our reality. Yes. And I have to uh, make a note here that Tamar is absolutely wonderful person. She is everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Meaning, uh, like, whatever the interview is there, I'm doing the interview. Oh, welcome really? is doing the interview. Hi, welcome. She was saying hello. Tamar is always there to support. She's sending hearts. She's sending flowers. She's sending the sun. She is just, <laughs> how can you manage <laughs> yeah. Such a supportive person, such a friendly one. Just, just unbelievable. Tamar, if we can uh, please get back a little bit to this Erasmus. Uh, yeah. I'm interested how much time you spend there and uh, like in Portugal, in Germany, and can you tell us a little bit more of this daily routine of a lecturer? Uh, how many groups did you have? How was it? What did you learn from your students? Because they learned from you a lot, that's obvious. But how was it to be teaching? 
uh, teaching during Erasmus, yeah? Uh, so first of all, I can tell you that, uh, um, of course, it's quite difficult to enter uh, like a new classroom uh, and uh, no matter how well you plan. And there is a, like, a, um, there are still intercultural differences, yes? You are meeting uh, uh, representatives of different cultures, different communities, but of course, sometimes uh, 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 from countries to countries, uh, it really differs. Uh, when I was meeting Portuguese students, there was, it was not quite easy. Yes, uh, uh, yes, because I am quite extrovert person. I tried to engage them with these activities, but of course, again, a, a lot of depends on co-hosting professor. Uh, that's why I was really lucky in case of like a professor course, in case of professor uh, Hazel Slee, who was British, uh, she was supporting me. She introduced me with class because I was also observing uh, her class. Then, somehow, uh, just uh, more or less, uh, we are. So, yeah, uh, but. Uh, at the same time, students also love uh, uh, and they, they love the experience of uh, uh, submitting like a foreigner, yes, in this case, and like a greeting. Uh, at the same time, they're at the same time curious, but we have to meet the expectations. And uh, I was really happy that in all these cases, uh, uh, even in cases of Germany, uh, I met the expectations because I, I was trying to make the classes. Uh, 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 so uh, attractive and versatile, based again and again on authentic materials. For example, when I went to Russia and I, uh, my topic was um, like uh, uh, teaching freedom of spirit, speech and expression based on authentic materials, I introduced uh, this topic with a uh, newspaper art article about very famous British comedian, Louis Ree, and uh, about your like story about your divorce. And I, I just actually, uh, I, we, we uh, just uh, there is a, a lot of uh, background work uh, apart from for when you win there is one thing when you travel when you get adapted but it's it's very important to offer something practical at the same time timely relevant to the interest but at the same time we should be culturally conscious and sensitive uh, it's very important uh, but in all these cases, more or less, I succeeded, but I, I, I really was doing my best in order to uh, just use uh, um, a lot of visual aids uh, in order to uh, just, um, of course, uh, plan the all lesson stages effectively, starting with the icebreaker. It's very important uh, to get to know with the students, of course, with uh, um, practice uh, before when moving to the just uh, presentation stage with brainstorming ideas uh, at the same time. So you need to become uh, so a member of the family uh, at the same time, but you need to offer some valuable product. Yes. And uh, I can also tell you that I was, uh, uh, so apart from these like, practical classes, I was also very lucky. Uh, I was also visiting Polish institution, the University of Roslo. Yes, uh, where I was uh, giving some methodological uh, workshop to teachers, to my fellow colleagues, how to effectively plan our ESP classes with authentic materials. And at the same time, I just made a demo lesson with the students, which also worked well. But of course, I was just all the time differentiating the authentic materials. Then I moved to, of course, so TED Talks integrate, but now I am fond of using podcast into my like uh, uh, so ESP classes because it really works well it's very important for at the same time uh, boosting receptive skills such as listening skills uh, it's, it's it really works well so it's very important to offer something uh, just uh, versatile something new up to date at the same time meeting their language level and competence uh, so and of, of course I can also recall my experience of um, uh, so uh, another, it was not 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 Erasmus, but it was again guest lecturing offered by Würzburg University, so which has a really great uh, tradition of uh, law. The Faculty of Law it, itself is, was established in 1401. The campus was the oldest, and the students again. When I gave the uh, class in legal English, I was at the same time honored, but at the same time thrilled, because I really uh, just. Uh, 
want it because it's you know it's not it depends italian audience i love italian audience polish but german audience is something uh, not sophisticated but they will not even smile they will not even get engaged unless uh, you offer something valuable so they are a bit self restrained that's why but from time to time i somehow just uh, uh, just started to notice and of course at the same time when uh, when i was visiting them for the second time they all all the time were familiar with me and it was a bit easier for me yes but uh, this is uh, somehow uh, how i feel because everything comes from experience but of course uh, now i have another challenge of co-teaching uh, and guest lecturing online with kazakhstan students and again, again this will be experience how to uh, overcome uh, this sort of cross cultural barrier um, virtually but i'm i'm just uh, morally prepared <laughs> yes And, and uh, Tamara, it's interesting, uh, you know, during this uh, Erasmus program and uh, when you were a guest lecturer coming to different countries, apart from the lectures which you actually deliver, uh, do you uh, interact with the teachers um, or your colleagues lecturers in some kind of workshop where you exchange your knowledge or they come to your lectures and they learn from you or you visit their lectures? How, what, what does it look like? Um, of course, uh, again, it, it depends. Uh, there is not. A, sometimes there is a, like a, a preliminary agreed, uh, so timetable schedule, which is uh, a bit easier. Yes, because um, deciding something on spot, uh, it can be difficult. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, the, so in my experience, uh, I used to be uh, so delivering workshop, but it was demanded. It was agreed with my supervisor. That's why supervisors and hosting professors uh, really make great jobs. And everything depends on, on them, on the goodwill at, 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 at the same time. On your, because, you know, sometimes when I was in Portugal, as one, when I was in Germany, with this, like, it was my second visit. Uh, and uh, I was co-hosted by a very famous professor, uh, just... Uh, Eckhart Pache, uh, who was uh, visiting Georgia. Uh, I was, I'm working at the same time at the Constitutional Court of Georgia uh, for International Relations Department, where we organize summer schools. And, and when the pro 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 professors, when they learned that I am very much eager on, on such kind of opportunities, they invited me. And uh, uh, he appointed me uh, like a hosting professor, Lindhart, and I was living in her house again, in a nice village. But when this professor noticed, oh, Tamar, you are working too hard. Come on, please take a day off. Yes, go to like a Newburg it, because it was a Christmas time. Yes, but sometimes I really want to get uh, my best. I want to take the maximum. Uh, and I'm really, uh, I really don't want to miss this opportunity uh, to be co-working with such kind of people like Harvard educated so co-authors of legal English books. I have still, because I, when, whenever I come back from this uh, kind of guest lectures, my, um, how to say, My luggage is somehow uh, just overloaded with three or four kilograms of luggage. It is somehow at the expense of like uh, some books which can be present for authors. Uh, and uh, so no matter, but I, I'm really fond of, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, taking such kind of uh, just um, benefit. So it's very, it's, uh, it's beneficial for my professional development again. Uh, because uh, um, uh, so being uh, um, like uh, even uh, I'm not I no longer like uh, how to say quite start a professor. I, yes, I have been teaching uh, more or less like more than so uh, um, like uh, uh, 14, 16 years at university, but still. But still, so I have been all the time using opportunities whenever we were also hosting uh, professors, uh, uh, Fulbright professors at university, we're all the time with her or with him in order to, uh, because you, you know, uh, like maybe even if, if we take like 10 years ago, we did not have so much exposure to uh, EFL, like to uh, English, English speaking communities. That's why, So with these personal relationships, uh, these were much valued. That's why. And yeah, somehow. Volkan <laughs> is asking any experience from Turkey. <laughs> okay, let me share. So I'm really sorry, but I'm, I cannot see comments on the chat. 
I don't know with my phone or. So uh, Volkan is asking any experience from. Turkey? Yes, yes, I will. I just answer with pleasure. Uh, you know, uh, I have not had any experience of co-working with Turkish professors, but luckily I had a great chance of co-working with Turkish Erasmus students. And by the way, well, Polish students as well, and Spanish students, but majority of them were from Turkey. And I really love the hardworking nature. I was teaching them. It, it was uh, at Batumi State Merit, uh, just uh, Batumi State University. I uh, I, I offer a, a like a theoretical and practical like, combination course, which is called called business communications in English. And I somehow I get a lot of students. Sometimes even uh, it's enough for two practical classes. But Turkish students, whenever they are on Erasmus, they all the time come to this class. And they are so hardworking. I even just uh, um, supervised one, one so uh, just Ada uh, for like uh, she she did uh, some research paper for like a local education conference with my sons. There was a so uh, the collaboration of student and uh, potential with a future teacher. Another guy who was great at storytelling. I still miss the classes of business communication because when I teach uh, uh, just oral communication skills and now I teach, of course, TED Talks, but I also all the time start with the storytelling and I also ask my students to improvise stories. And uh, this Turkish guy, Embre, now he's Canada, he's doing his master. He's applied for my uh, for master, just uh, to be more correct. And I gave him reference. I was really honored when he just uh, contacted, contacted me from Canada uh, before New Year and asked me, dear Dr. Tamar, could you please do me a favor? Of course, I am really, I'm always ready to support my students and not only to motivate, not only to uh, inspire them. And they often write me, oh, you inspire us. How, just, uh, but no, I really would like uh, them to uh, actually uh, to support them with whatever I can, with my references, with my materials, uh, with up-to-date tips, uh, for example, how to develop, a, because it's business communication course, uh, so it's planned and it's uh, mostly built around how to uh, just actually win an interview, but before winning an interview, how to design, develop a good CV, types of CV, so the good type so cover, like cover letter. The, then it comes a job interview simulation, like mock interviews. And then we have a lot of like uh, stuff with uh, meeting simulations, TED Talks nowadays. And of course, the students, they are all the time very happy and we are interacting all the time. But of course, we are, we are like, they are like uh, my fellow colleagues, my future colleagues. Uh, and you know why I love teaching this subject? Because I am meeting future teachers of English. Uh, and uh, it's very important for me uh, to, to witness and to observe how just um, how to say my uh, how to say potential fellow colleagues uh, to motivate them. The teaching profession may not be so rewarding right now in Georgia, unfortunately. But the, so I, I really hope that it's a really useful profession because you are generating, you're educating. Uh, citizens of your country, which can change the world. And we teachers, we believe that we can change the world with our like, uh, good prospects, good motors, messages, and etc., etc. So that's my experience of uh, co-working with Turkish, Turkish uh, uh, so students mostly. And, and as for lecturers, not yet, but I can tell you my small secret and plan. Uh, I have contacted, uh, so I just thanks to Volkan once again. So uh, my, my network uh, of uh, just uh, professional like uh, colleagues, I really uh, just it increased in Turkey. Yes, and uh, the, we are supporting each other and uh, one of uh, like a, a colleague. Uh, so I don't know Pinar if she's here, but she gave a really great webinar with SR teaching and learning recently about teacher well-being, but uh, well-being and but anyway we were uh, just in contact with your uh, thanks to Volkan uh, because thanks to such kind of interviews I really would like to thank Volkan because he was the first who and, and during pandemic there was also another guy Alistair uh, just uh, from uh, America and also you Olga you are doing a great job because it's very important for teachers to be networking to be exchanging ideas during COVID-19 and I believe after COVID-19, 
this uh, experience will uh, will, will be maintained. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Will continue. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's you know it's um, it's impossible to travel everywhere. Uh, yes, and that's why. But we need to prioritize. Yeah, what is good for us? What is uh, maybe what can be done later? But anyway, it's a great job, and I really would like to thank all these guys because you are doing really great job. Yes, getting Thanks. just getting Thank us you. in contact. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all your kind words. Tamar, you were mentioning uh, Georgian uh, education as well. Could you please uh, somehow take into account your experience abroad uh, as, as a lecturer, as a guest, as a tourist even, uh, take into account all of this experience and kind of compare it with the education in Georgia, with the uh, cultural aspects of students. So uh, everything what you have noticed. Okay, I can notice that uh, so what, uh, and what is also uh, not only uh, noticed by me, but also international experts, because we are also, uh, I'm also a member of the like a research group. Uh, and we are and recently we have been doing a very nice, it was like a virtual Erasmus project, uh, intercultural communication project. And I just I got engaged with my three students elected from my institution. And they were are doing a synchronous learning and for six weeks and with uh, uh, just e-tutors and I was one of them and uh, uh, and they, they were interacting with the students from Italy because as he uh, mentioned I belong to those I also teach uh, in an asynchronous manner because I teach with the video uh, lessons, which I uh, shot and submitted in summer, and I also submitted didactic materials plus tests, but I'm not meeting students online. It's asynchronous learning, but still, uh, I, I was involved with this university and with my university as well in this Joital project, which is run by German uh, Dresden Technical University, and I was very happy to observe how our students succeeded and how well they interacted. And because there were students from Slovenia as well, so Italy and Jordan. So Jordan students, they had, had some even apart from just um, law language competence, uh, but of course there, there, will be, there, will be, there were some problems with intercultural communication, but it was uh, thanks to e-tutors, it was solved, but still I was really happy uh, uh, to see that Georgian students really performed well and they really got highest degrees uh, uh, from this uh, project and they got even credits. Uh, and at the same time, this yes, indicated the fact that uh, due, to, due to very correct and very, how to say, intense internalization, uh, which has been uh, ongoing in Georgia since Georgia became a part of Polonia process. Uh, and of course, we, ha we were, there was no, no other option. We were supposed to be getting rid of this post-Soviet influence of like uh, um, just uh, of educational, educational system. But of course, we cannot compare. There are still a lot of work to be done, but thanks to this, like uh, uh, experts with it, uh, Erasmus again, uh, car projects, students exchange, a lot of visiting professors. I can tell you that even in, at, the, at the example of my region, Ajara, a lot of significant work has been done uh, and uh, not speaking about infrastructure which is quite attractive but at the same time um, uh, just have to say um, um, uh, so awareness uh, teaching methods uh, even materials libraries uh, even uh, how to say uh, importance of like uh, uh, being published uh, as a um, high weighted authors this has changed in georgia and i can tell you that it is even the approach of like uh, academic honesty there are a lot of projects uh, I have to say, which is somehow um, uh, very much applicable. It is related to current need the, because uh, still plagiarism is a great problem, not only in Georgia, but still due to due to this like uh, ongoing project on uh, on this uh, reducing and mitigating these uh, um, plagiarism problems. 
so a lot of work has been done and there are a lot of special detection programs uh, uh, and of course academic honesty really matters because nowadays we are globally integrated there is an open access because your you have to say academic weight uh, can be very instantly uh, just evaluated uh, if you go to the internet and uh, search your name it's really very important for us that's why uh, so i can tell you that a lot of steps uh, have been done but still a lot has to be done uh, even but the, the thing is that uh, like a uh, libraries of course uh, uh, western countries they have huge libraries but now thanks to uh, online resources we can download but we do for the but uh, still if, if i compare myself working in like a uh, for the Mutsburg University Library, which is a huge one, and, but, but our libraries, they are modest, but still, thanks to the online resources, we are doing our best. Uh, but at the same time, I can tell you that during COVID, my country, uh, you know, Georgia, you, like uh, in our country, we are very adaptable to any change, maybe because of this, like, uh, um, yeah, so political changes, which was in the past, uh, we, we had no other choice. That's why even during COVID-19, as soon as the pandemic was announced, we just even without, I can tell you that even without preparation, we had to move to online learning even in schools, at universities. Uh, but thanks to uh, joint efforts, thanks, thanks to collaboration, because all teachers got united ever and ever. So this was very important, even globally. We are all in this. This, this was a campaign and we were supporting each other. Like for them, I had some experience of running MOOCs, of like participating in online webinars, trainings, for example, before pandemic, I gave a webinar with ITFL, special interest group, group, but not all teachers, yes, at my institution at Batumi State Merit Academy, yes. But of course, we were uh, just giving webinars, some tips, and also say, at the same time, university administrations and the, at the government level, a lot of support, uh, or moral, financial as well. It was issued in order to, I have to say, morally, effectively, uh, transit to the mandatory online learning. So this once again shows that uh, in Georgia, of course, uh, we are quite adaptable to new changes, but we won't change. We see that education is very important and we have to work. Absolutely. That's my, Come yes, on. that's my insight, yes, and thought. Thank you. Uh, here we have a question. What is the first step for that great experience? Probably uh, it was uh, the moment we were talking about Erasmus and uh, being a guest lecturer. So the first step for, for this great experience, could you give us a tip? Tip. Okay, why not? So first of all, it's very important. So for the you cannot apply for your Erasmus unless your university uh, issues a call. So for example, um, that's why uh, you should be all, all the time, how to say, uh, very much uh, uh, so updated with recent information, uh, what new programs, what announcements are made by international office, because you should not go to the international office. No one is going to tell you because it's an open contest. But at the same time, of course, uh, first attempt, it's very important to, before applying, it's very important when they give you the list of uh, just uh, uh, host institutions, you need to go to the, try to at least uh, find a contact person or like a, a, or hosting professor or hosting a faculty representative for, because uh, nowadays the big universities, even in Italy, I recently uh, got in touch with a great person, she's a Erasmus a, uh, coordinator at the University of Catania, South Italy. And we, I even gave a webinar with her uh, for her students, PhD students on academic reading. And, uh, but of course, we started to negotiate Erasmus agreement. So there should be Erasmus agreement. And when you find such kind of person, uh, it's very important to have support letter. That, uh, for example, this and that person or like uh, um, from the faculty or like the education or like maybe law, because if you are teaching legal English or ESP or like business English from business faculty, you, it's very important. Uh, uh, because this is a plus number one. 
uh, that your chances of being recruited um, in this case is higher when you have such kind of support letter. But then, of course, you need to state your motivation, how the institution uh, will benefit from your experience, what will be multiplier, uh, just effect, whether you are going to uh, just have to say, because there are some Erasmus programs, when teachers go, they just teach and no continuation, no, how to say, prolongation. That's why it's very important to maintain these relationships, to, co to organize later some joint events. Uh, because whenever I went on Erasmus, I all the time was taking something new for my institution. That's why it's, it's being uh, on Erasmus, it's like uh, being an ambassador. Uh, of your country, of your in, in institution. And I can tell you a joke that sometimes uh, I, when I, w I also was working for International Relations Department of, of Local Government, and I was one who was uh, just uh, organizing memorandum between like uh, even Poland, Lower Silesia, and my region. And of course, maybe this is my like uh, job related skills of like uh, uh, just uh, being organizing. Uh, whenever I go on Erasmus, I take my this um, partially signed uh, uh, just memorandum of understanding because it's very important for me to, uh, to, to, to have some formalized uh, more and more relationships. That's, uh, that's a plus. Uh, so it's, it's very important to be active, to state your motivation once again, at the same time uh, to offer, I have to say, subjects, at the same time a comparative analysis, uh, not, not only theory, something practical to the countries you go, you are uh, referring to, and uh, to, the, to for your home, home country or home institution. This is my tip for Erasmus. But this is for teaching mobility. But as, as for other Erasmus research projects, these are really, uh, this is really uh, just a different experience. In this case, uh, I, I think that Erasmus coordinators, they have uh, more in-depth knowledge, but still I'm really happy that during pandemic, uh, so I, I was contacted by Italian institutions from Naples and we established very nice uh, we first we were organizing research group with um, only Italy and Georgia, my institutions. Then we tried to expand, but we we got united onto the topic of communication because I'm teaching communication. I'm also teaching communication and language philosophy uh, with Italian university. And this guy, he was teaching business communication. Then he offered a great guy from United States. He's a really great uh, just uh, expert in technical communication and medical communication. And uh, uh, then plus my great friend and supervisor in ac academic writing and publishing from Norway. I was also visiting Norway for this academic, yes, uh, publishing group. And I also engage my two, three students right now. It's very important to develop your academic reading and writing and publishing skills. And he's an expert of uh, uh, persuasion. And he also gives brilliant podcast and I all the time share with my students and we edit Norway then we edit uh, somehow uh, so uh, Romanian Institute Timisoara uh, and uh, we will be uh, today I was uh, actually organizing uh, so I was um, preparing the draft paper uh, about this like a uh, framing in communication with Norwegian guy because we need to uh, present a paper in March uh, with this guy and plus uh, so this we call it unig just unigger, which means United States, Georgia, Romania, Italy. So, and we will be uh, to developing our research project, knowledge man management in communi professional communication. That's our, how to say, that's, that's my very f just future plan. Yeah, but I'm excited, but at the same time, I'm like a small actor. But of course, uh, it's great honor for me to be co-working such a the big project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big project, but it will be signed at the institutional level. And so it, it was already approved by Italian institutions. And of course, Georgia will definitely sign. Yes. Your country must be so proud of you. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. I'm not absolutely, doing it. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for giving, uh, giving these tips, Tamara. Thank you so much. Could you please tell us, uh, if it's not a secret, your longer term goals or your shorter term goals? What are, you, what are your plans? Okay. Um, once again, one of my short term 
her goals include uh, visiting uh, Kielce, it's near Krakow, but I also uh, got in touch with uh, Krakow University of Economy and with, again, foreign languages department. I will be meeting them, but again, everything depends on pandemic. As soon as these travel opportunities uh, uh, allow us, I, I really need to be traveling to Poland. And I and hope also, you will be passing by Warsaw. <laughs> Warsaw, yes, I really would, would be very happy. Olga, really, because I really would like to meet all these people uh, just uh, from us, SR Teaching and Learning. I know Samat, he's a great guy, but uh, all it's just uh, are these guys, SR Teaching and Learning, they are really doing a great job because uh, uh, just, and of course, a lot of uh, webinars, workshops, uh, and they are so popular in my region and in my, in my country, even in my country, uh, because um, just uh, I was here and discussed with Samat that if it happens that they will come to, to Georgia, not maybe for big gathering, because nowadays we are not still sure whether big gatherings will be allowed, but still for a small web, just webinar training with Paul Harvey, which is so popular and beloved in Georgia, it would, it would, it would be more than great. And I will be we can just, always keep this meeting yes. half distance, you know. <laughs> yes. So this is our short-term goal. Yes, of course, again, organizing again, just say uh, I have like uh, for spring, I have to be giving that's lecturing in the business communication at Kazakhstan University. Also, I just uh, finalizing my paper, yes, for this conference. Yet at the same time, it's very important for me uh, to focus, uh, um, of course, being a member of ITEFL also. I'm also uh, just in the list of giving like one more webinar in business English special interest group. Yes, again, like uh, uh, based on how to plan effectively our business English classes with authentic materials. I have already some like uh, draft plans. This is what I already know, uh, which can be partially uh, done online because nowadays weekend, of course, I really would like to be uh, going to Nepal, so where my head, headquarter of my online university, uh, which is based in Malta, but the main university is in Pe Pegaso Telematica, it's based in Naples. And I really have already some friends and colleagues, and we are all already doing some smart rural tourist project, and I, I'm involved in gamif gamification part. It's again Erasmus, but it's like a large consortium, but I am acting on behalf of uh, Pegaso University, but I really would like to be, but I am invited because we really need to do a lot of work on spot. As for my long term, so you know uh, what I really would like to be do. So uh, yes, I am communicating, I'm guest lecturing, but even my students of business communication, who is a brilliant uh, one guy, Tedo, he's like a, he's a, uh, he's almost my colleague, and he wrote a book on business communication. But so far, I have not even even found the time, and I even not have not given any thought to to plan thinking about a book or monograph, yes, but something about practical guidance. Maybe this research group will somehow push me because I, when I am doing something, I really to, I want to do something high in a, just in a good manner, in a very well-planned manner, not book for book. Yes, for my like... Uh, Thomas, uh, but I yes. will be the first to buy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I want yes. to tell you, please don't put too much into perfection. You know, mm. just yeah, do it because some... you're already perfect. Believe me, if you just put the knowledge which you already have, and if you will share experience on like 100 or 200 pages you already have, I will be the first to buy, to recommend, and to show. Yeah. I will present. I will present to you, to, to you, Olga. No worries. <laughs> but uh, no, I cannot answer this question. But it's a, like a long-term goal. Yes, it's very important for me. And I'm again, I, yes. I wish you to <laughs> put this goal into plan and and start working. On Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank Tamar, you. of course, I want to ask you. You mentioned that you don't have time for it, but for all of the activities, how do you manage? What is your work-life balance tip? Tip. You know, uh, it's very important for me and um, uh, because uh, uh, work is work. Uh, becoming a workaholic, it's, it's not a good idea. Though during pandemic, I, I, I admit that I became more workaholic than I used to be. But 
still it's very important for me to be quality time in order to avoid this burnout, which I at least pre just uh, teach my students. Yes, when I also teach business English. Uh, but, you know, somehow uh, I effectively managing time. And once I attended a very good training on how to productively manage your time, which was uh, delivered by a very nice trainer, former Minister of Education of Georgia, but he was educated. And he was uh, giving very practical tips. tips. You know, uh, it's very important to, uh, to, uh, to even to spend quality time with your family. To uh, sometimes, uh, so I can, I, I can be complaining that, am I a good mom? Because I have two sons. They go to the language center. I don't have time, but I can supervise them, yes? Sometimes I guide them. I find time to even walk with them, yeah? They grow, just already one is teenager, one is eight year old, but still, it's very important to devote time to friends. I have really friends not only online. Uh, at the same time, I really love just, uh, uh, I have to say, devoting uh, just time to myself. I really need some time to be isolated, to have some privacy, yeah? Uh, to read, maybe uh, to go and swim, which I do during summer, but when, the, when now, now gyms, they are like, uh, uh, just post they are closed, but still, I, I take just fresh air walk, yes, almost, uh, along the seaside very often, yes. Uh, there should be something special. But uh, just once again, so if we just, maybe it's, it can be my innate skill of multitasking, uh, but still I try to uh, multitask, but try to somehow devote quality time to whatever I do, yes. But at the same time, uh, just once again, correctly manage manages, this, this must be coming from work because when you're like working with a team, when you're working for like international affairs, when you have a conference, when you have, you have to multitask, this can be work-related trait, but this can be also personal trait. More or less, I can, so people say that I, I'm very good, but maybe I'm not perfect. Maybe I'm not uh, doing something in a, just, uh, just in, in the most accomplished uh, way, but still I'm doing my best to uh, devote attention to friends, to my close people, associates, uh, to attend your events, uh, as our teaching and learning event, and you know, a lot of other events. Yes, at the same time, to read, to reflect, to plan the lesson, to give a good lecture, um, uh, to be uh, more or less like a, uh, so well looked after. Yes, it's very important to love yourself. And yeah. I can admit that I, I'm starting to love myself. Yeah, this is so, yeah. this is so important for yeah. women, especially. Yeah, especially yes, especially, and yeah. uh, this all helps at the same time. So, but at the same time, it's difficult because sometimes uh, we we may have these moments of um, maybe there can be some climaxes in our lives. There can be some just downs, but still we need to balance. We we need to stay somehow positive. And it's very important to see just mostly good points in, in whatever we do. It's very yeah. important, yeah. Tamar, if I may ask you, uh, when there is a moment that you are like overwhelmed and you have a lot of things to do within a very tight deadline, so what is your the most um, useful tip for like managing, you know, a lot of tasks within a short time? Do you have any? Um, well, you do not accumulate with them. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like uh, more or less, I have never failed so far, at least, more or less. Yes, I'm trying to... This means that I am more or less capable of uh, meeting all these deadlines. Otherwise, uh, if I had failed several times, I am sure I would not have taken. But, you know, I, I, really, I, I used to be even doing more. But I really started to prioritize. Uh, some, somehow, I, I really just... Uh, um, during the, I even like have some planned weeks, planned months, maybe terms. Yes, it's good time management once again. At the same time, if it uh, just gives us, how to say, uh, how to say, more probability of succeeding in whatever we plan. It's very important, but of course, everything depends again on external circumstances. Uh, like if we, if we take like a COVID example, sometimes we may not achieve, but uh, what depends on us? And what, I need to be feel that I'm self-actualized. I've done my best at least, but of course, uh, if, if there is some moments that I'm just 
I feel that I can fail uh, when I even when I when I'm also co-working with the team. I can say, oh, so I need some help, please. So um, I, because this should not be surprises uh, in others' life because when people rely on you, that even like your colleagues, you just uh, your co-workers in even academia, yeah, it's very important uh, uh, to be I to say, accountable before them accountable to your family, to yourself, and to community. Uh, it's very important, yes. And every, everything, everything stands from the sense of being socially responsible. And COVID-19, once again, I think it showed to the global community that we should be socially responsible towards each other. We should care, share, and teach each other. I think that's the best tip because I maybe have been very lucky uh, to get such kind, to be getting such kind of good tips from just more experienced, uh, more knowledgeable colleagues of mine, friends of mine, uh, just uh, old friends of mine, and like, like uh, people like you. <laughs> and I have to say also that uh, everything what Tamar is uh, right now saying, to be responsible, to be supportive towards your colleagues, what uh, what happened actually when I sent Tamar a short form? I say uh, I sent to all of my guests like to fill in some uh, blanks like yeah. your name, uh, Instagram name, and, and so on. And they said, Tamar, don't worry, we have time, so just take your time and send it whenever you have a free minute. And she <laughs> said, I'll do it right now. In five minutes, I had the form back. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know. So I, I don't know what Tamara was doing that moment, but it was a working day. So I assume she was busy, but she decided, no, if I can do it in five minutes right now, I will do it right now. And it was, I was just amazed. You know, this is the actual, actually the small lesson which I learned from you, something which you can do immediately. Really? Do it, you know, don't yes. postpone it. And don't it postpone so yes. as well. Yes, it, it's called pro pro procrastination. We should not procrastinate things, yes? Because do whatever. So we, we, used, we used to seize moment, life moments, yes? And so otherwise, if we postponed, if we go, this means that you are maybe less probable of completing it. Yes, that's what yeah, I allow. That's maybe, yes, that's, maybe that's my tip of like meeting these tight deadlines, yes, because I really would like to be done when I have this just gap or span, yes, I need to complete it and I'm, I'm doing about it. Yeah. Tamar, I'm so thankful to you for our interview. Oh my God. It, it's like oh. time flew so really? fast. It's been an hour, you know. So we have uh, literally two minutes, unfortunately, only two. If I can ask you, please, could you say final word to our audience, some kind of wish, advice, tip or just just a kind word whatever is on your mind like a final note okay so i i really wanted to somehow uh, so uh, once again like i, I really just um, i often repeat to my students but you are not my students of course i'm i'm sure that uh, just a lot of more experienced and more knowledgeable and competent people may be attending my just life i i cannot see unfortunately just my attendees but still uh, I often refer, uh, I, I started to fall in love with Aristotle uh, once I just uh, got interested in the science of communication and language philosophy. And sometimes I may just uh, look up the phrase that you are what you repeatedly do. So it was said by Aristotle. This means that our success, our personal branding, because no matter uh, to how much personal branding, so coaching sessions uh, just you take, so we are what we repeatedly do. Uh, so this is our personal brand. This, this, this should not be artificial. This should be uh, coming from our just, uh, uh, just uh, knowledge, from our just what we are. It comes from our insight. It's our innate skills. Uh, plus, of course, we need to constantly and uh, be developing ourselves in all fields, whatever we are doing. Yes, that's why CPD is my like. Uh, not to say motto. So we should be continually professional development oriented in all fields, in all activity, in order to, uh, no matter where we are, we are training, training, we are trainers, we are with like a, a project leader or team leader or like a researcher. It's very important to be all the time uh, just uh, updating in recent development in the field. 
uh, whether we are teaching young learners, whether we are teaching adult learners, whether we are teaching master students or PhD students, which I really enjoyed twice this. Uh, and I was teaching like, uh, for example, so Italian students, PhD online, and of course, Lithuanian students, legal communication, but still, it's very important what whoever you are teaching to, uh, to do your, just have to say maximum, to do your best, to try your best. Uh, and of course, never stop uh, developing yourself. And so it's a kind of lifelong learning. This is my motto. And of course, at the same time, we need to be so active uh, we need to be motivating others, but also at the same time being motivated. And at the same time, it's very important to be a good listener. So being a good listener is a key to uh, being effective communicator. That's what I teach my students. And I, I, now, now I, 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 I'm, I'm really sorry that you listen to me a lot. And I feel awkward, you know, but no, recently, that yes, recently I have been listening to a lot of podcasts, to the, a lot of intelligent people. So listening is very important. Listen uh, and be effective, a good listener, uh, which will turn you into, um, how to say, effective communicator. And we should all be, how to say, good communicators and global citizens and advocating yeah. only good things. That's my Thank message. You. Thank That's you. We have message. so many things here in the comments. People adore really? listening to you. And so much thankful to all of your advice, your tips, uh, and uh, sharing your experience and knowledge, Tamar. And I'm so thankful to you. And guys, this is not the, the this is the first, but not the last session of us <laughs> with Tamar. We already agreed that we will have more because Tamar is just a star and she has so much to share no, with I'm us. Not. It's just the beginning. <laughs> So, Tamar, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I need to hit the end button. It was my but great I pleasure. I wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you guys for the being same. with us. See you next time. Stay healthy, everyone. Safe and sound. Absolutely. Thank you. Love bye you. Bye-bye. Have a nice evening. Bye. <laughs>